All right, and we are back and we are going to talk about the structure of non-crystalline uh, materials. So many crisp, many materials are crystalline, but the the best materials, the cool materials, the polymers, liquids, liquid crystal displays, glasses, gas, they are all non-crystalline materials. Now the distinction is non-crystalline materials, sometimes generally categorized as amorphous materials, they have short range order, but they lack long range translational order and long range orientational order, or, or some combination of two, uh, those two. So we have, everything has short range order to some extent, um, but the long range order, either translational or orientational will change. And one of the critical tools that we will utilize to um, obtain a numerical metric um, in some sense, and actually a visual representation of the order and specifically the long range order is via a pair distribution or sometimes called a radial distribution or a, it's basically a pair correlation function. Um, it's a little bit nasty, but what you can see here is we are going to be drawing rings. Um, here it's actually a, a small volumetric volume. So it's a volume of a sphere and we're going to be counting that little shell and how the we're going to be counting the number of atoms that it hits as we slowly increase essentially this r plus dr at the radius. So I think it's best exhibited um, and we could actually calculate the number of nearest neighbors from the integral of peaks as well. Um, you'll see this or this should be a reminder from your XRD lab um, to kind of visualize this as well. But anyways, um, we can actually observe this in 2D as well. So you can calculate in 3D, you can also calculate in 2D. So in my pair distribution function, the value is basically determined by the number of atoms that that shell hits. So when I have a radius here of zero, and we're not counting essentially, I, I pick a central atom um, and I start to draw increasing little rings. Now the rings, again, until it hits the center of an adjacent atom, we don't count our own atom. We basically see nothing, nothing, nothing. And then suddenly we reach a sphere that hits several atoms and you see a spike. And then you keep increasing. And then sometimes you, you know, you see a second peak um, if there's significant, but you see kind of the width here. Now, if we were looking at a metallic structure and we wouldn't do this just for, uh, and then eventually you lose kind of you reach a baseline where everything kind of looks similar. So if we were looking at this for a metallic structure, how would that look like? Well, if I pick this central atom, I would basically see nothing, nothing, nothing. And then I'd hit my first nearest neighbors and then I'd see a spike, a single spike, because I know the instant that I go past this, there's nothing. And then you see another spike, and then you see another spike, and then another spike, and then another spike, all the way to infinity. Now, basically, this indicates the 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 wide the the narrower the peaks, and the the longer it extends into some distance r, that is going so more basically larger number of peaks and the sharper the peaks, the lower the width, you know, basically smaller with it half maximum um so sharper peaks and the number of peaks will indicate a strong degree or large degree of long range order if we only have a few peaks and if they're also very wide that's indicating there's not much you know there's short range order but there's not significant long range orientational order so we can distinguish between materials in that manner um, additionally so we can see here metal or crystalline material, some type of amorphous material like a liquid or a polymer. And then this is just a flat line, it's a gas. Now for metals, it's even more interesting. We could actually get a pretty quantitative with these graphs. So we know that the first peak should occur at our nearest neighbor distance, which is always 2R. Now the second nearest neighbor distance, if we're simple cubic, that should be 2R root two. If we're BCC, that's our lattice parameter A, which is going to be 4R over square root of 3. And if we're FCC, that's also 2R root 2. Um, we can also integrate the first peak to get our number of nearest neighbors. And we know for simple cubic, it's 6. BCC, it's 8. And for FCC, it's going to be 12. So we can actually utilize this to determine what material is um, what material is based on that PDF RDF similar to like what we did in XRD because again, these are related by that inverse space, uh, basically Fourier analysis. So that is it. So 
be ready, work hard on piece at two, and we'll see you all next time. Thanks. Bye.